Hey guys, I just wanted to show you uh, a new thing that I purchased. This is the QHY163M and um, this is going to be the unboxing plus a little um, talk about how I plan on using it. So this came all the way from Hong Kong uh, from a shop called Cyclops Optics and um, stickers right here. This is not a paid endorsement, but um, I've been dealing with uh, them for some time now. I bought three cameras with them already, and I can only say um, outstanding things about them. Their service, how fast you get things. I got this in two days from Hong Kong to Canada, and um, just phenomenal. Um, and the reason I, I got a QHY, and I'll show you why. So let's open this. All right, so we got the typical QHY CCD um, card, and then um, the camera's right there. So let's take this out. It's really tight in here. Okay, so this is the camera, and we'll speak uh, a little bit more about this in a, in, a, in a minute but first let's see what else comes with the camera we have your uh, charging uh, the, your uh, AC wire I guess so that's that what else we have in here this is the two inch adapter to stick into your telescope. Uh, you could probably fit a two inch uh, filter here too. I don't think I'll be using this and I'll show you why pretty soon. What else? We have a guide uh, cable and we have some dew solution type thing to remove dew I guess. I don't know the exact name for it. Okay, let's move that here. Let's move that here. What else we have in here? Let's see. This is the cable that I think attaches to this to power it. You need uh, 11 to 13 volts with three amps of current. Now this is your USB 3 uh, cable that runs from here to the computer and it's nice and thick as you can see this is really thick. And finally we have the charging adapter. Okay so if you are um, at home and you want to set up in your backyard, then this is what you will be using. But in the field, you'll probably want to use a 12 volt uh, battery and uh, provide power that way. So let's get this out of the way and talk a little bit about the camera. So I've been shooting uh, mostly with my DSLR and I've been doing narrowband with it. So this is going to be a nice um, change because first of all, not only is this a, a mono uh, sensor, uh, 16 mega, uh, megapixels, it's also uh, a cooled camera. So it cools it up Delta 40 or 45, I don't remember. Um, uh, two stage cooling, 128 megabytes uh, DDR. Uh, RAM or what do they call it like a buffer um, so this is exactly the same camera as the uh, ASI 1600 mm Pro uh, meaning that the sensor is the same uh, and practically everything else is the same I think they have a the, the Pro version has a 256 uh, uh, megabyte buffer but um, I think that's okay now why did I go with this? Well, first of all, I think it's a little cheaper than the uh, ZWO version. 
But if you, and also the other thing is the sensor sits a little further back uh, than the ASCII version. So uh, the ASCII 16, 6, uh, 1600, I think the back focus is 8.5 millimeters. I can't, I don't remember quite sure, but this is a little deeper in. So if you use 1.25 inch filters, um, sometimes you really uh, need to be close to the filter so you don't have the netting around. And so that helps. Not in my case. I will be using um, two inch filters, Botter two inch filters. And so I don't have problems, you know, I don't need to, you know, put it so close to the filter to cover the whole field. Um, so, but what really is good about getting this camera from Cyclops Optics is you get this for free. Now, what is this? This is their blade adapter. So let's quickly look at that. So this is the blade adapter. It comes in this nice bag. And there's also, they give you four or five uh, half a millimeter spacers in case you have, um, you need to adjust your back focus. You know, you want like tighter stars in the corners. Um, so that's good. Now, what is this? So this, I'm a Nikon guy, so all my lenses are Nikon. And this is the F mount version of the blade adapter. It says um, uh, blade N. And so what this will allow me to do is attach uh, any lens and I'll be able to shoot with a lens and my back focus should be perfect because this is specifically made for the Nikon F mount. The distance, I'm assuming, should be pretty much, uh, what is it, 46 and a half millimeters, I think, or 56. Uh, in any case, um, let's see how that goes. So my wide field lens is the Rokinen 135. Now, what's going to happen is, so you basically, well, this is nice and tight. You put this on, you find the red dots. Okay, that's good. That's fixed. So now this is attached. I'm going to place it down like this. And this goes in here. Oh, this is a heavy thing. Let's, let's uh, fasten it. Okay. So there we go, right? Now you have your wide field angle, narrow band imaging with a mono sensor. Inside there, you can stick your uh, narrow band filters two inch, 48 millimeter. Um, then all we need to do is, I'm gonna place it down again. This is a 3D printed, um, 3D printed rings that I got from the internet. I print the, the, the prints from the internet and I printed it at the library. Um, I'm gonna quickly take these bolts out. Now, be, the re, why am I using these ring mounts? Because this lens is extremely heavy. Um, so, if I remember this correctly, I haven't used this in some time now. I think the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So there you go, like this. This is going to be mounted. It's um, it's a little heavy on uh, on the camera end now because my my DSLR was a little closer in. It wasn't as far back, but um, I could move this on the mount to balance the deck axis, so that's not a problem. And there you go, your, your wide um, field uh, imaging solution out of the box. So that's why I went with Cyclops Optics. You get this free adapter. Uh, with ZWO, you have to, I think, buy it separately. 
So it's a win-win situation. Two days later, you have this in your house. Now, we can also uh, get... Okay, so now I can use this with a telescope also. So let's see. Let me take this off. We'll put the camera away, the lens away for a second. Okay, so now on my telescope, which is the ED80, I have the reducer on it, right? And this part is the, the Nikon ring, the T-ring, uh, that goes into my Nikon camera, right? So it's specifically made for Nikon so that when you put a Nikon camera here, your back focus is exactly that distance. I forget the flange length. Is it 46 or 56? I think it's 46 and a half, but in any case. Um, when, uh, so yeah, so, so because this adapter is made for the Nikon F mount, all I really have to do, technically, I don't even know this is like, I'm assuming this, right? I haven't tested this yet. You put this on, right? So now this is your back end. This, you put your uh, filter in here, and this end goes into the telescope, and this is your setup with a telescope now. Um, the only thing is, I'm going to use the calipers to measure the distance between the, the, the last element and the, uh, the sensor to make sure exactly I have the right distance. After that, I will... Uh, Obviously take, obviously take some test shots and see how my stars are in the corners because um, that's going to be really important before starting. So that is the quick review of the QHY163M. Haven't tested it yet, but as you all know, there's been plenty of images on, on this sensor, on this Panasonic sensor, and... Um, the only things that I can think of um, that I don't like about these cameras, which is the ASI 1600 and the QHY163, they have reflections on bright stars. And that's due to, uh, I forget, some filter uh, on above the, uh, the sensor. Uh, cameras like the QHY183 don't have that. But again, we're dealing with a smaller sensor, different, different uh, field of view. So um, I think for my setup, uh, this guy is going to work really well. Another thing why um, I chose this one versus the 183 version, the 183's version uh, pixel size is 2.4. Now, if you do the calculations right and you calculate what your resolution is, uh, not with the lenses, but with your telescope. With me, it, it comes down to like an arc second or even less. And I'm on the Celestron AVX uh, mount. Now those mounts are notoriously uh, not accurate. So for me to get um, an RMS of one second, uh, that, you know, you don't want to even be guiding at one second. You want to be guiding at like half a second, you know, to to really have sharp images. So I can't get that. So I didn't even try getting that camera, even though it's a little cheaper than this one. So uh, once I try this out uh, and find my optimal gain settings for my focal lengths and my gear, uh, I will definitely put some stuff up. And I think my next video is going to talk about SNR. So look out for that. Thank you very much, and uh, see you later.